morning students so the previous class we have discussed about this you know anatomy of this digestive system right so we are looking into the topic here is digestion and absorption so the previous class we have discussed about this anatomy of this digestive system from mouth to this ants right so hope you have covered the portion and today we are going to discuss about the first topic is histology of gut right histology of gut histology of gut okay so what do you mean this gut so gut in the sense you know the alimentary canal is a long muscular tube right so from mouth to the anus there is a long alimentary canal so here especially from esophagus to rectum it's called as a gut esophagus to rectum so it's from esophagus esophagus to rectum region esophagus to rectum is a gut region right and histology of gut in the sense nothing else here we are going to discuss so this gut is made up of what kind of this tissues that's all right now hope you remember about the tissues so the tissues one chapter we have discussed very clearly right so there is various types of tissue is there there is epithelial tissue connective tissue muscular tissue as well as a nervous tissue right various tissue types we have learned right so here we are going to discuss what type of this tissue is present in this gut region. That's all, right? Okay. So this wall of this gut, from this esophagus to rectum, the wall of this gut is made up of four layers, right? It is made up of four layers. Let us see. The first layer, the outermost layer of this gut is called serosa. Serosa, right? The outermost layer is serosa. So this serosa is made up of squamous epithelial tissue. Squamous epithelial tissue. Do you remember squamous epithelial tissue? And it consists of some connective tissue also. Connective tissue. It consists of some connective tissue also. Right. And the second layer, the second layer of this wall is known as muscularis. Muscularis. Okay, it is known as muscularis. So this muscularis is made up of some uh, circular as well as a longitudinal muscle fiber. The shape is circular, circular as well as longitudinal. Longitudinal muscle fiber. It's made up of muscle fiber. Right. And it consists of some no cells. No cells. Then it consists of parasympathetic nerve fiber. It consists of parasympathetic nerve fiber. Parasympathetic nerve fiber. Do you remember this parasympathetic nerve fiber? So in the nervous system of this frog, we learned as this nervous system is classified into two, three, the three that is central nervous system. Peripheral nervous system as well as autonomous nervous system, right? So the autonomous nervous system is classified into two. There is sympathetic as well as the parasympathetic nervous system. And its function is antagonistic to each other, which means opposite to each other. If one is increasing the secretion, the next one will reduce the secretion, right? So there is a role of this parasympathetic nervous system. So here, uh, so here it is this parasympathetic nerve fiber is there. And it is controlling this, you know, this peristaltic movement of this in the strand. Peristaltic moment. Peristaltic moment. So peristaltic moment means, you know what it means peristaltic moment. So we are taking the food through this mouth, right? So the, with the help of this uh, tongue and uh, saliva and, uh, and so on, upper jaw, lower jaw, everything is grinding the food very well. Afterwards, we are swallowing the food. So when you swallow, it is rich in the esophagus. So from the esophagus, it is moving towards the stomach and small intestine, large intestine, rectum. It is moving in one direction, throughout one direction, right? It is not moving in backward direction. In certain disorders, jerk we said, in cases, it will backflow will be there. There is a, some disorders. Otherwise, normally it is moving in one direction. Even the position, the person is in inverted position also. The food is moving towards the direct, direct and right path only. Not in this entire path. Have you got? So this is because of the movement which is produced by this intestinal wall. So the intestinal wall is producing one movement. Because of that only the food is moving towards the next correct path. Have you got? That movement is called as peristaltic movement. Okay, so this peristaltic moment is controlled by this parasympathetic nervous system. There we go. 
and the third one is this submucosa layer submucosa mucosa submucosa layer right so this submucosa layer consists of some loose connective tissues so it consists of some loose connective tissue loose connective tissue do you remember loose connective tissue okay and again this consists of some blood vessels blood vessels lymphatic vessels lymphatic vessels some no fiber some no fiber and especially it consists of parasympathetic here parasympathetic we have said here it consists of sympathetic no fiber no fiber it consists of sympathetic no fiber okay and especially this is controlling this secretion of this intestine so this is controlling this intestinal secretion intestinal secretion so intestinal mucosa is secreting the intestinal juice so this secretion whatever secretion is there it should be in a you know limit it should be in a proper level right it should not uh, exceed it should not be reduced so it is controlled by certain nervous systems right so here this intestinal secretion is controlled by this sympathetic nerve fibers which is present in this submucosal layer of this intestine okay and the innermost layer the last layer is called mucosal layer mucosal layer okay so which means we can say so this is this, if it is a hole so this is intestine you could say so this is a lumen inside the cavity that we could say as a lumen lumen right so and this is the wall so this wall only made up of these four types of this layer have you got so this wall only made up of four types of this layer so this innermost layer this innermost layer only mucosa right so they said it is covering the lumen so the cavity so inside like this so this is if you feel it is this cavity the innermost layer is called mucosa so this mucosa layer is secreting the mucus mucus have you got so this is the four layer which is present on the wall of this intestine right or gut right? have you got so that's all about this histology of gut and we can move to this next topic fine okay so let us begin this next topic is regarding this glands which is associated with this digestive system okay so of course as we know that the digestion process is taken uh, uh, place by this various organs right so and especially some digestive glands also involved in this digestive process right so do you know what are the glands so the salivary glands then the major glands we could say it's liver and pancreas and the stomach consists of certain glands right and intestine and also secretion also there so let us see one by one what are the glands are involved in this digestive process right okay so digestive glands so the topic is digestive digestive glands right digestive glands so what are the glands are involved in this digestive process the first one we could say it says salivary gland salivary gland right so the first one is the salivary gland and the second one is this you know liver the largest glands are liver and the pancreas pancreas right so these are the digestive glands right and the gastric gland gastric gastric glands are present in this gastric glands are present in the stomach region then the last one is the intestinal intestinal mucosa intestinal mucosa so these are all the things is involved in this digestive process right and let us see one by one wherever it is located and its structure so here we are going to look into the structure and anatomy right so later we are going to discuss about how it is involved in this digestive process clear okay so let us this first one is this digestive gland so the digestive gland is located in this buccal cavity right so if you see this buccal cavity so right so this is a nostril and this is mouth so this there is three pairs of salivary glands are located there is three pairs of salivary glands so the three salivary glands are the largest one is a parotid gland parotid parotid gland okay then sub mandibular sub mandibular gland and the pair of sublingual gland sublingual gland 
So, so this is a three pair of gland is located in the in the buccal cavity, salivary glands. It is secreting the saliva, right? And if you see the location, the parotid gland is the largest salivary gland, and it is located in this cheek region, especially near this back of the cheek. So we can say near this ear region, right? So in this ear region, the largest salivary gland is located. Okay, it consists of this lot of lobes, right? And it is secreting this saliva, right? This is the largest lobe. And this is present near this ear or back of the cheek, we could say. Right? Okay. And the next one, this is the parotid gland. Parotid. Parotid gland. And this secretion is left out. It is in, left into the buccal cavity, right? It is secreted in the saliva and it is left into this buccal cavity through the duct. So the duct is arising from here, right? So the duct of this parotid gland is known as, as tensions gland. Tensions. Duct, sorry, distant says duct. Okay. And the next gland is located in this, you know, in this jaw region. Jaw region. That's why this is mandibular. Mandibular means in the jaw region. So the next gland is located in this jaw region. So here we could say it is jaw region. So that is smaller than this parotid gland. So it is present in this jaw region. And this is known as, as mandibular, submandibular. Submandibular duct. Sorry, submandibular gland. Submandibular gland. Okay. And this also secreting the secretions, and this secretion also taken towards this in the buccal cavity region through the duct. So this duct is known as Watson's duct. Watson's duct. Okay, Watson's duct. And the third one is this sublingual, since it is located below this tongue region. So it is located below the tongue region. So this is smaller than this one. So near the tongue region, both the sides. That's why this is a pair of. Okay. And this also consists of this duct. Okay. And this duct is known as Bartholin's Bartholin's duct. So have you got? So salivary gland, there is three pair of salivary gland is there and the, maybe the one more question, which is the, the largest salivary gland is the parotid gland, which is located near the cheek region, back of the cheek region, almost near the ear. okay. And this duct name is tensions duct, okay. Next one is this, near this you know, jaw region, that is submandibular or submaxillary also and this duct name is as Watson's duct, then this third gland is located below the tongue region, that is known as Spartholin's duct. So it's a sublingual gland and sub, the gland name is sublingual gland. The gland name is sublingual gland. Sublingual and the duct name is Bartholin duct. So the secretions are left into the buccal cavity for digestion. And every day they say this salivary glands overall it is secreting 1000 to 1500 ml of saliva. Understand? Okay. So that's all about this salivary gland right and the next we could see about this gastric gland so let us see this liver and pancreas later and let's just we can look into this gastric gland so this gastric gland is present in the stomach okay so if we say stomach then the stomach the stomach consists of this gastric glands okay so this gastric gland consists of three types of the cells okay the first one is this you know, peptic cells. Peptic cells or it is known as a cymogen cells. Cymogen cells. Or it is known as a chief cells. Chief cells. Have you got? There is a first cell which is present in this gastric gland. Gastric gland. So the gas, where is this gastric gland? It is present in the wall of the stomach. Have you got? Okay. And this consists of the first cell, it is a peptic cell or it is known as a cymogen cells or it is known as a chief cells. So its secretion is gastric juice. Gastric juice. So this cell is secreting the gastric juice. Okay. And another one, goblet cells. Have you heard the goblet cells? Already we have discussed about this goblet cells. Goblet cells. This goblet cell is secreting mucus. It is secreting mucus. Understand? And the third one is this, pyter cells. Pyter cells 
or it is known as oxyndic cells. Oxyndic cells. So this is secreting this hydrochloric acid. This is secreting hydrochloric acid. Have you got? So stomach consists of gastric gland. The gastric gland consists of three types of these cells. That is peptic cells or it is known as cymogen cells and the chief cells. It is secreted in the gastric juice. Second cell is a goblet cells. It is secreted in the mucus. Third cell is a pyker cells or it is known as oxyndic cells. And it is producing this hydrochloric acid. Okay. And this wall of the stomach is absorbing this vitamin B12. Okay, vitamin B12. It is absorbing the vitamin B12 with the help of this intrinsic factor. Some intrinsic factor inside. The factor is present inside. So it's very known as intrinsic factor. That is known as a castor's. Castor's intrinsic factor. Castor's intrinsic factor. So this is responsible for this. Absorption of this vitamin, absorption of this vitamin B12. Understand? So now, so later we are going to discuss how this, you know, secretion is helping for the digestion of the food that we will look into this. You know, physiology, have we got? Okay, that's all about this, you know, the salivary gland as well as this gastric gland. Salivary gland over and the gastric gland so on. And let us see about this liver and the pancreas as the next. Have we got? So let us start about this next largest gland, so it is liver and pancreas, right? So first let us look into this liver, structure of this liver, right? Okay. So liver is one of the largest gland which is present in the body. So it is one of the largest gland and it is present in the right side of this upper, upper abdominal region, right? And if you look into the structure of this liver, the liver consists of two major lobes it is formed as a lobes right it is formed as a lobes so this this is the right lobes right lobe and this side is this left lobe so it is the right lobe and this is the left lobe right it consists of two major lobes that is the right lobe as well as the left lobe and it consists of two minor lobes also two major lobes as well as two minor lobes okay then so these lobes again it inside consists of a lot of lobules Lobules, so it's just like a drawn it as a hepatic lobules. Hepatic means liver. So this each lobe consists of a lot of lobules. This is a functional unit of this liver, right? And these lobules consist of the cells that is called hepatic cells. Hepatic cells, right? So this lobule inside it consists of these hepatic cells. So these hepatic cells will produce the secretion of this liver that is known as a bile. That is bile. Have we got? So actually liver is secreting bile juice, right? So back from this bile is secreted, lizard. So this is the two major lobes and this is the two minor lobes. So each, every lobe is made up of the smallest units that is known as lobules. So each lobule consists of these cells, that is liver cells, that is known as hepatic cells. So this hepatic cells is going to produce this juice known as bile. Have we got? And one more point is this day. So each lobule is covered by this connective tissue. That is one capsule. That is known as glissens capsule. Glissens capsule. Right? Okay. So here yeah, we came to know this liver is producing this bile juice. Right? So this bile secretion is collected by some duct. So the secretion is collected by some duct. And it is stored in one bag like or one pouch like structure. That is known as a gall bladder. Gall bladder. Okay. So this gall, what is the function of this gall bladder? This is going to store this, the secretion of this liver. What is secreted from the liver? Bile. Have you got? So uh, if since it is stored, of course it should be collected by some duct, right? So here there is a from right lobe and from the left lobe, from each lobe, right? So two duct is arising from each lobe. The lobe which is arising from right side, we can say it is a right hepatic duct. And the lobe which is collecting from the left lobe, we can say it is a left hepatic duct. Understand? Right hepatic duct is collecting this bile from the right side. Meanwhile, the left hepatic duct is collecting this bile from this left side. Okay. And both is connecting together. Can you notice here? So both is joining together here. So this duct is called as a common hepatic duct. Common hepatic duct. So this common hepatic duct is left to the next duct which is coming from this 
gall bladder that is known as a cystic duct so this cystic duct so this is collecting from here and it is storing inside this gall bladder and finally this is led through the cystic duct it is coming through this path understand ah, that's all about this liver actually understand so this is the major function as i said already its function we are going to see later right so this is the structure understand then so this secretion is coming here right and uh, so liver function is the major function we said it is uh, so for this digestion process and other than this digestion process the liver is doing some other roles also okay let us see what are the other roles is done by this liver right the first one it is destroying this aged as well as the damaged or basic cells aged cells it is damaging this it is destroying it is destroying this aged as well as this you know you know damaged or basic cells right then the second thing it is storing this glucose inside in the form of glycogen so it is storage of glu glycogen Gly glycogen right and it is liberated as a glucose glucose whenever the body is a shortage of glucose this glycogen will be con converted as a glucose and it can be liberated into the blood stream right so the the glucose is stored in the form of this glycogen here understand okay then it is a storage of you know fat soluble vitamins fat soluble vitamins what do you mean fat soluble vitamins a d e k vitamin a d e k is a fat soluble vitamins and is a storage of iron iron also it is storing this fat soluble vitamins as well as it is storing this iron right and the next one this is useful for you know this liver is useful for the synthesis of essential amino acid essential amino acid it is useful for the synthesis of essential amino acid what do you mean essential amino acid there is a lot of amino acid is there which is required to the body for the production of this protein right so some new amino acids will be naturally synthesized by our own body so those amino acids are known as it is non essential amino acids so in case of essential amino acid it is not produced inside the body so since we have to take it through the diet but it is essential to the body that's why they have named it as essential amino acid as well as a non essential amino acids right so this is producing this essential amino acid cells it is involved in the synthesis of this essential amino acids understand so these are all the other functions of this liver have we got so there is one of the major digestive gland okay now we can go for this pancreas right the next one is the pancreas so pancreas is the largest again the second largest pancreas is the second largest salivary sorry and uh, digestive gland second largest uh, digestive gland and it is you know um, longitudinal it is a long tubular tract structure and this also present along with this you know uh, liver and especially it is present below the diaphragm region diaphragm have here diaphragm so the lungs you know for example this lungs trachea so the trachea is enclosed with the lungs here at the base of this lungs it consists of you know diaphragm at the base of here only this liver and the pancreas is located have we got okay and this pancreas is going to secrete this pancreatic juice now understand actually the pancreas is doing this double role it is one of this exocrine gland as well as it is one of this endocrine gland so this in the tissue chapter we will learn what is exocrine and what is endocrine right? do you remember what do you mean exocrine gland exocrine means it will synthesize this enzymes endocrine means it will it is going to synthesize this hormones right so this pancreas is doing both the role it is one of the exocrine gland and as well as it is one of this endocrine gland okay so in this exocrine part it is producing this pancreatic juices understand it is producing this exocrine part the exocrine part exocrine part of this pancreas is producing the pancreatic pancreatic juices pancreatic juices okay and this pancreatic juice consists of what are the things pancreatic amylase pancreatic amylase pancreatic lipase pancreatic amylase pancreatic lipase and trypsin 
these are the things he is present in this pancreatic juice right so there is a role of this exocrine role of this pancreas okay then the endocrine role endocrine so the endocrine role means which means it is going to synthesize this hormones right especially it consists of this tissues that is known as this islets of langerhans islets of langerhans Langerhans. So this islets of Langerhans is going to produce this hormones. The hormone is insulin, insulin as well as glucagon, glucagon. So pancreas is going to produce. Listen me. Pancreas is doing the dual role as exocrine and the endocrine role. Exocrine part is producing the pancreatic juice. Understand? And this pancreatic juice composed of pancreatic amylase, pancreatic lipase and trypsin. Have you got? The endocrine part of this pancreas consists of the specialized tissues that is known as this, islets of Langerhans. So this islets of Langerhans is going to secrete the hormones. The hormone is insulin as well as bulgogon. Have you got? Okay. Then now listen here. So from this gallbladder, the, the cystic duct is arising from here. From the pancreatic duct, so pancreatic duct is also leading towards here, right? And both will connect each other. Understand? Both will connect each other. So the pancreatic juice is coming through this part. Bile is coming through this part. Have you got? And both is meeting together here. That duct is known as, a, since it is both is joining together, it is known as a hepatopancreatic duct. Hepato means liver, right? So hepatopancreatic duct. So this common duct is known as hepatopancreatic duct. So from this duct, this secretion is left into this. Next part that is known as, as the first region of this intestine that is known as duodenum. Do you remember? Duodenum, jejunum and ileum. So duodenum part only connected with this, this one, right? So in this part, duodenum part, the pancreatic as well as this liver secretion will be left inside. So through this part, a part of pancreatic duct. Okay. At this opening, it consists of one muscle, sphincter muscle again. So it will contract and close and it is controlling this liberation of these hormones inside. That sphincter muscle is known as a sphincter of OD. Sphincter of OD. It is controlling this, you know, liberation of these hormones into this duodenum. Understand? So that's all about this pancreas. Have we got? So we have completed this digestive glands. First topic we have discussed about the history of this gut. Then we have discussed about this digestive glands, right? So there is the salivary gland, gastric glands, liver, as well as the pancreas. Okay. The next class we can meet with this the digestive process okay so listen so in this chapter especially we have to go for this of course the histology of the duct you can learn as one five more question right if they ask this three more question they can ask okay what are this layer is present in this what are the four layers is present in this gut so we can write only the name of this layer alone right or which tissue is present in each layer so that will be asked as a one more question Okay, that is so that you have to learn. And the digestive glands, especially we say salivary glands. So overall, they could ask this, what are the salivary gland is located? If they ask along the structure, it will be a five mark question. So if they ask only to name this, uh, you know, salivary gland, it may be as a three mark question. And the duct which is related to each gland will be as a one mark question. Or which is the uh, um, largest salivary gland is, the parotid gland is a one mark question. Okay, so underline it and learn as this. Okay, and the next one is a gastric gland. So, what are the cells is present in this gastric glands and what is its uh, respective secretion also? So, that is either it is a 5 mark question or each one individually either is a 3 mark and 1 mark question also. Okay. Along with it, then the next one is the liver. Of course, your liver you can learn along the structure you can learn as a 5 mark question and, and there's other uh, functions which is responsible uh, for the by this liver also as a 5 mark question. Pancreas also one of the five mark questions. Since it is given along with the structure, you could learn as a five mark question. Hope you will cover it. And before our next class, we can meet in the next class. Okay? Thank you.